So I remember when we were growing up, our mom had a friend and she had a daughter who was a couple years older than us. And so a couple times a year, her daughter would gather her clothes that she had outgrown and put them in a garbage bag and send them home. And my mom would bring them home and it was like Christmas on those days. Yeah. And so we would sit down on the living room floor and we'd start going and sorting through it. We didn't have a lot of extra to buy. Like, I can't remember, maybe when we were in high school, but never going into a store and buying new clothes. No, only secondhand stores or hand-me-downs. Yeah, I do remember we had, there was a Kmart and we were, one time it was fifth grade and we were going on like music tour for the day. And so our mom brought us to Kmart. Yeah. We, got, we each got a new top. Mine was purple, yours was like a hunter green. Wow. Like a boat neck and it had some little embroidery around oh, the yeah. neck, right? Oh, we felt so cute. And yes, we felt very special those days. <laughs> and what's funny is that our mom will apologize to the, for, yeah. to us about this, right? And she's like, I'm so sorry we couldn't give you everything that you wanted, right? And we're just like, oh my goodness, mom, would you stop? Because we learned the value of stuff. We were very resourceful. And when we did get those things then, we really appreciated it. And so I went to Home Goods on the way here, but I was thinking about, I think shopping's actually more fun as a minimalist. I agree. I'll explain, we can explain why. And so I do agree. I do think in many ways, like people have asked, like, do you feel like your modest upbringing made it easier to be a minimalist? Mm. And I don't know, because I think sometimes it's easy to go the opposite way. Yeah. That if you didn't have a lot, then as soon as you're able to acquire it, you totally. start doing that, right? Yeah. But I do appreciate growing up having an appreciation for things. And I feel like minimalism has mimicked that as well. Where as you start to declutter your house, you really find the things that add value, that you really like, that you want to care for, and you kind of weed out the rest. And then when you do need to go shopping, <laughs> you approach it completely differently. Yeah, and I, so I was in the store, so I was looking for just a few very select decor pieces for our home. One thing, we're kind of updating Adley's bedroom. She's three now, so yeah, we're going for a room. <laughs> it was just like a universal gray and teal nursery, right? Because we didn't know if we were having a boy or girl. So now it gets to be her girl room. Declan gets to have a boy room. Whoever comes along next will go in one of those rooms. <laughs> yep. um, but I was thinking as I was shopping, oh, the other thing I'm looking for is a mirror for our half bath. I want to mm. just update that a little. And as I was shopping, I was thinking, that's why I called you. I was like, this is so much more fun because <laughs> you're not just grabbing whatever looks kind of trendy and cool or what, or I got cut in the clearance section mm -hmm. and there was a mirror that would have been the exact right shape and kind of what I was going for. And it was on clearance for like 20 some dollars. So I was like, bonus, but then I remembered anything in home goods is damaged if it's on clearance, yeah, usually. usually. And so I started looking, like inspecting it, and I found the little scratch at the bottom. And you know, at first you're like, maybe the faucet would hide that, or if I put yeah. the soap dispenser there, because it was gold. <laughs> There's really no way to like, you know, hide yeah. that. Um, and then I was like, no, Diana. Yeah. <laughs> like, this isn't what we do anymore. Right. We are treasure hunting for that thing that yeah. we're gonna love for years to come. Yeah, and I realized too, I've actually been doing like a fair amount of shopping recently with our bedroom makeover, getting the foster care room ready, and then also I just, for our kitchen, oh, yeah. like that would, mm -hmm. so I actually feel like I'm shopping kind of a lot, but it's the exact same thing. Like when we were looking for the chairs for our bedroom, or I was looking when Tom was out of town, I just kept telling myself like, don't settle, don't settle, get something that you are going to want to have for a long time. And so it's a, it's definitely a different filter. Yep. And so it did make it a lot more fun though. And feeling like because I don't impulse buy other times now when I'm out and about that I can spend a little more on higher quality pieces yep. and really get something that's nice. And as soon as we sat in those chairs, I was like, this was worth every penny. And if I would have settled on something else, every time I sat in it, I've been like, Darn it, why did I do that again? <laughs> but the absolute number one best part of shopping with a minimalist mindset, less guilt. Yeah. Cause you know how then you like, it always adds up to more than you thought and you give them your credit card or debit card and you're like, ouch, you know? Yeah. And then you're kind of like, maybe I'll return something. Yeah. It, like it, it actually then when you get to the cash register, like kind of a lot of times ruins all the fun. Yeah, or when you get it, Home, home and you're trying to like sneak it into the house or put it somewhere yeah, or, or other people are going to see it or really justify it yeah yeah like i don't feel that no because so, i got two things today 
Yeah, what did you get? Okay. Yeah. So this is, I just put here for fun because my friend Look Bethany made it for our foster care room and like all the kids have been like holding it that and, a, sweet and they love that it's for like our foster kids, but I hope we can send it home with one of them yeah. at some point too. So anyways, I just had to share that. I love that. Uh, so this is for our Adley's room. So I painted the walls teal without asking her. Um, she was two at the time and she came into the room and she said, mama, you know my favorite colors are blue and pink. <laughs> so she has blue curtains now, and I thought, this is pink. Yeah. But we've been doing little um, memory verses with her. Oh, yeah. And so I just thought we could clip them up there, and at night then we could go through them again. The only thing I'm not quite sure is if this is the right scale for the, sp the space that we have. Hmm. But so it's kind of nice, too. I'm still not, like, attached to it. Sure. I'm still looking for just the right thing. And so if it works, awesome. If not, that's okay, too. Well, and we had gotten kind of similar ones, the heart-shaped ones in the girls' oh, rooms yeah. with these little clips, mm -hmm. and they have loved um, being able oh. to put their own pictures on it. Yeah. So they put pictures on, and... I thought we could put family pictures, too. Yeah, the ones yeah. they want to have on there. So that's been kind of fun. Okay. Easy to swap them out. So you think that's a good one? That's cute. She's going to love it. I think so. Okay. And then I just think this was kind of funny. I was kind of laughing to myself when I was picking this out because I needed a hamper for Adley's room. And I just thought this is like ironically small um, <laughs> because all the other hampers are these massive canvas yeah. totes now and they say like laundry on it. And yeah. So, um, and I just thought this was just so cute and little and, and kind of funny because we just don't have that much clothing for right. her. So I literally do laundry every five days for the kids, one load. Mm -hmm. And so it'll all fit here. And then when I wash it and dry it and fold it back up, it'll fit back in here. It's yeah. a, I don't know. I was kind of chuckling to myself and I'm like, that's such a cute little hamper. So... And you had mentioned too that like if you hadn't seen anything you wanted, now these days you don't have a problem leaving the store without finding anything. Yeah. One thing though that I did also take video of because I thought this was funny, um, they had the Batiste dry shampoo yeah. in the line, like a mega can okay. for a good price, okay. but I have dry shampoo at home. Oh. But there was a mega can for a good price. <laughs> and I even thought, like, does Dawn need this? Yeah. Does mom need Who this? Can I get this? Who store? needs this? Do Should I, I just need stock it? up? Should I stock up? I don't really do that anymore. Um, so I walked by. Yeah. Uh, so another, you know, these are the muscles that you develop. Yeah. And I, we just don't, like, stock up as much on things and just kind of, yeah. And I think, too, because we used to do, like, a lot of garage sailing, and I've realized that I've been finding myself even driving past garage sales. But I know myself, and, like, when it's only a quarter or 50 cents or a dollar, yeah. it's just so easy to grab it. But really, at the end of the day, it still just all comes back to inventory. And I know myself now, after seven years of doing this, right, that I would rather have less inventory to yeah. manage. But... Those garage sales and those thrift stores and those clearance sections in yeah. Home Goods will always be there. So if just because you might miss it today, like if at some point like you really, really need it, yeah, it's still gonna it's be gonna there. Be like there. the deals are still gonna be there. So I'm so curious if anybody else was feeling this way. In fact, I haven't even told you this yet. Okay. Okay. Wait. You're, we're gonna get an honest like opinion right now. Okay. So I'm going. I'm joining a new gym. <sighs> okay. <Damn>. But, <laughs> Nah. -uh. Okay, but so it's no. But listen to me. Okay, it's the same gym that I was going to when I met Princeton. Remember how effective that was? I was part of that gym for like two, a year and a half, and yeah. it was more of like a boot camp style, community based yeah. class, specific class time. So you have to be there at a time. There's people with you, a trainer that helps you, that kind of pushes you. And it was like boot camp style, so it was like kind of competitive. Yeah. And like that was right up my alley. And that was the best shape that I've been in. What's By the way, happy fifth anniversary, Princeton and Diana. Oh, happy anniversary, Princeton and Diana. This Friday. That's this okay. Friday, okay. Um, anyway, I was in the best shape of my life. I went all the time. And so they just opened this same gym 10 minutes from my house. So what's their cancellation policy? I'm not actually, that I don't have no, pain. no, no. I'm asking for do, a friend. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna do month to month initially. Okay, good. I'm yes. just gonna do like I don't. I haven't even found out. I gotta find out what their pricing is. I'm just gonna try to do a month or something okay. like that. And yep, gotta try it. The What's, time of the class fits perfect. Okay. So and so I have Princeton child care. Will take care of yep, the kids. I have. We have it, and he's supportive. And it's community based. Did I mention that? So people again, people orientation. Yeah, I could see that. So you kind of feel like people are gonna notice if you're not there. Yeah, or I'll be a little more driven because it'll, it'll be kind of a hangout time as well. That's true. Adult time. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. So this is what's happening. This is what I'm wondering if anybody else is feeling it. For me, I think it's a double dynamic going on where Declan just turned one, Adley turned three. I have a little life sure. back. Sure. Um, but also we're just coming out of an intense year yeah. and things are starting to normalize a little bit. Yeah. And so what I wanted to talk about today wasn't just me going back to the gym, <laughs> but kind of this like dynamic that we're all experiencing right now of what does it look like to just move forward and not try to go back? Mm -hmm. And yeah. there's such a pertinent story um, in the people of Israel. And if you remember, like poor Moses and the Israelites just got stuck in the desert forever. And that generation ended up passing away in there because they just didn't have it in them to go take hold of the promise that they that the Lord had for them. And I do feel like, and I think this is okay, I think there are people who are going to want to just stay back and kind of still try to maintain how everything was yeah. and old habits and old ways of being and that's okay. I, I think it's okay, honestly. But I do think there's people right now who might feel a little bit of this just kind of like stirring uh, hopefulness again. like what's ahead yeah. like mm -hmm. i there were dreams in my heart there were things i feel called to there were that one thing i always wanted to do yeah and it might be time to take hold of it right yeah. now well and i think even with you know i mean it sounds silly but like starting the walking group it was just yeah. kind of like we need something different yeah. of course it, it feels good to think about getting people together around mm -hmm. it but is there something that you've been wanting to do totally got put on hold the last yep. year and a half but it's time to pick it back up again and be like no you know what yep. i do want to keep moving forward yep. with that do you remember you gave me this really cute notebook and you put a label on the front of it that said future bestseller? Yep. So I do have, um, I believe my first book is going to be about prayer. Okay. And I don't, honestly, I don't care about writing a book to be like a New York Times bestseller. I yeah. hope people will read it and benefit from it. It's more what the process of that writing and studying mm -hmm. accomplishes. And prayer has always been like such a core thing for me. Yeah. And just recently it's been coming back to my mind. And I feel like that's usually how the Lord kind of speaks to me. It's not like an audible voice. It's just those little promptings and mm -hmm. little ideas that come in your head. And it's like, what about this aspect of prayer? Like, how do we get more faith in prayer? How, what does it look like to pray from faith and not just pray from pleading or in yeah. desperation? Right. Um, you know, and what is the difference and how does the Lord respond in both of those situations and how can we be more though in a place of prayer anyway it's all just been stirring in me again and mm -hmm. this is from the book of joshua where joshua actually helps lead people into the promised land and now this generation i mean they saw their parents pass away in the desert they saw the fear that they had toward taking hold of this promise but something in them was ready and so it says, this is Joshua 3, 13. And when the soles of the feet of the priests bearing the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, shall rest in the waters of the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan shall be cut off from flowing, and the waters coming down from above shall stand in one heap. Mm -hmm. Now the Jordan River was big, and it actually was at flood stage at this point. So you can imagine that some fear and like are we sure this is right should have and could have rippled through the camp but ultimately they went for it mm -hmm. you know and they took hold of the promised land and so you know obviously the key there is they they had to step into the water in order for the waters to be peeled back and so i just think if, if something is kind of stirring in you right now or it's been coming to your mind again or you're just mm -hmm. feeling a little more a solid footing mm -hmm. to step out again that there could be an invitation there for you to take that step and I think too, not, not thinking that we have to do it all right now, right? It was last August when we first filled out the application for foster care. And then it was like, okay, now next, just do these online classes, right? And then from there, do this Zoom meeting. And so it was just one step at a time. And so even if it's something you're unsure of, at any point in that, we could have stopped. You yeah. know, we could have said, you know what? We're trying, we're testing it, we're trying it, but it's just not the right fit for us right now. And, and that would have been totally fine. And so I think sometimes we have to back up and not look at the whole big scary picture, but just say like, well, what's one thing that I could do right now? And so it's super fun now that it has come together for us. Yeah. We still haven't gotten any phone calls or anything. We will definitely let you know <laughs> when we do. Yeah. But um, for me, I was ready to go all in, right? I would have been like, you could drop the kids off tomorrow. That's yeah. just fine. Tom needed us to take it step yeah, by step, and right? and the family too. Totally. Mm -hmm. And so just realizing where are you at? Are you a little shaken from the last season? So I need to just take one small step 
or are you feeling a little emboldened and I'm rested from it and now here we go, like headed. Yeah. So. so Father, I just pray for each one of us right now. Lord, I just pray first of all that hope would begin to stir in our hearts again, um, that courage would well up, that we would feel more secure in our footing, Lord, knowing that ultimately our trust and our hope is in you, not any circumstances in the world around us. So Lord, we look to you. Father, we look to you for the things that you've uniquely created each one of us for. Lord, and the things that you're calling us to in this season. Father, who can we help? Lord, who can we love? Who can we encourage? How can we help ourselves? Uh, you know, even go to a place of greater strength and intimacy with you in this season. And Lord, how can we continue to look forward and look ahead to the things that only you know are ahead for us? This is Proverbs 4, 25. Let your eyes look directly forward and your gaze be straight before you. So Lord, let us not look back. Let us not look to the left or to the right what others are doing, but Lord, let us look straight ahead. Let us fix our eyes on you. Let us get our courage and our hope and our vision from you, Lord, and that we all would move forward together in this next season. So I bless each one of us now in Jesus' name. Amen.